The idea that there were no Democrats who voted for this is pretty stunning. The idea that you have no, that the caucus has maintained is pretty stunning. It, it wasn't the case under uh, Bush. It wasn't under the, the case under Reagan. These are the only times we've had this type of, of tax reform. Um, I'm convinced a big part of it is because of Trump. And if it was Rubio, then this guy, Joe Manchin, would have probably voted for it. In fact, here he is on the floor of the Senate lamenting the fact that he couldn't vote for it, which is always, that's always nice to see. I want to thank my good friend from, uh, Senator from Oregon for allowing me to say a couple of things. I want to put this in perspective. I don't think there's a person more bipartisan than I am. I don't think there's a person that has not signed more bills in a bipartisan way with my Republican friends than I have, who has voted on more Republican bills or more Republican amendments than I have as a Democrat. And I am so, I'm, I, I'm really so frustrated that I thought that we can make this place work. That was my purpose for being here. I, th I truly did everything I possibly could. I reached out. The White House was kind enough to reach out to me. I sat down. I talked to all of the people who are in charge of writing this legislation from the White House. I sat down with my colleagues. I gave them some suggestions and ideas. We brought people together thinking we could find a bipartisan way. And Mr. President, I would tell you this, as I see it unfold tonight, this has been designed not to have even me as one Democrat on the bill. And I want to be. I want to be part of a reform. For the first time in 30 years, I look back at Ronald Reagan. He was a hero to all of us. Mm. Uh, and he had 97 votes. 97 senators voted for his legislation that he crafted. There you go. Um. Yeah, let's go back to the days when Democrats worked with Ronald Reagan to slash the social safety net. Couldn't agree more. With I really the enjoyed sentiment. his interview with Jank, and he kept calling him. He kept calling him Janks. It was awesome. <laughs> it's like, no, that's a real good point there, Janks. And he said, he, if you want to just watch though, like a kind of, he's sort of out of step, I think, in many ways with like not just the kind of modern Democratic Party, but 2017, and in, in many ways, but. Well, he's from the, West Virginia. Well, no, with all due respect to our West Virginian friends, uh, with, Donald Trump is up by still respect. fifty no, no, some but that odd, sixty percent. Yeah, no, he's popular rating. there. But the point there was that he was just, if you want to see, like, I think almost vintage style Bill Clinton. Like, Jank asked him a question, even down to like why he was one of only five Democrats, I think, who approved of a new arms sale package to Saudi Arabia to help, uh, you know, sort of fund their their uh, deployments in Yemen. And he was just like, you know, Jenks, I think our European partners don't provide the same kind of training that our guys do. So I'm real concerned. And I wouldn't call it collateral damage. I'd call it killing innocent people, which is why I want our guys training them to take less risk. I was like, yes. Well done. Yes, Joe Manchin. How about that, Jenks? <laughs> take that. Well practiced. That was so good. You just this, we're going to mitigate by selling them more weapons. And turned, we're going to mitigate I civilian sold casualties. sold weapons to Saudi, <laughs> literally creating the worst humanitarian crisis in the planet right now. And arming them up was an act of human rights. Janks. We're going <laughs> to... Hi, folks. Sam Cedar here. We still need your help on our Patreon page. YouTube ads have come back, but not nearly as much as we had before. So if you can help us out, any little bit helps. Head over to our Patreon page right at this URL, and you'll help us keep helping you by making videos.